Okay, if you missed the class, we talked about um, how we take the derivative of functions uh, being uh, via the product rule or the quotient rule. So it's first important to know, okay, when would you use the product rule in this case? <clears throat> the product rule is used anytime you have two distinct functions being multiplied together. Um, make sure that you're kind of thinking of a function as like a term where the degree is at least one or more. It's not just a coefficient. Otherwise, you'd be doing kind of too much, uh, too much work. So here I can see that I have a function being multiplied by another function. We'll call that u and we'll call that v. Each one of those, uh, we can't just take the derivative of those separately and multiply them. We have to follow this product rule. Now, the way that we organize our work is that we set up our u and our v and then our u prime and our v prime. We kind of set up this chart over on the side to help us organize what, uh, what is what and the derivatives of each. So u is going to be this entire thing, 3x squared plus 1. And v is going to be that entire thing, sine of x. And now we still do take the derivatives of each one of these separately. 3x squared using the power rule becomes 6x. A1 using the power rule would become plus 0 right, if we take the derivative of a constant at zero, but I don't need that. And then v prime, let's see, derivative of sine is just cosine, right? So we have these derivatives now, what we talked about in the past is the order at which you put them together. We can go u prime to v, and then we can add u to v prime in that order, which helps us for our quotient rule, or we can use our formula here. I like to use that formula where I put that together And I'm gonna start with, um, let's see, instead of calling this y prime, we're gonna call it g prime. Now, what I should note in this problem is that I am asked to find g prime of zero, but just remember that we're gonna find g prime first and then we'll plug in zero afterwards. All right, so what's u prime here? Let's look over here. u prime would be this, so it's gonna be six x. And what's important here is I'm gonna use parentheses to show that I'm multiplying and to show that group that I have times v which is gonna be sine of x. So once again, I'm gonna use parentheses to show my grouping. And then I'll put a plus in between because that's part of our formula. And then I have to do times u times v prime. So u is gonna be right here. So it's gonna be three x squared plus one. And then times v prime is gonna be cosine of x. All right, so now we have all of this. This is our derivative function. Now, what we could do is we could distribute, right? We could write this as 6x sine of x to simplify this or condense it. And then here, I got 3x squared. I got two terms and then one term, cosine of x. I'd actually distribute from this way. And what I would have here is 3x squared cosine x. And then cosine times one is just cosine of x. And then I can look for like terms. Let's see. I have um, 3x squared plus cosine of x. So I have these two things being added together. So I could really call that 3x squared. Well, no, this is really it, right? This is the best I can do. So with that being said, um, I could rewrite it like this and write that as g prime. I'm actually gonna use the factored form though because I wanna plug in zero. And the beautiful thing is uh, I kind of like the organization of that. So now we'll find the slope of whatever this function is, whatever, if we were to graph this function and find the slope at zero, let's find it. Um, I'm gonna do six times zero. I'm gonna keep my parentheses and I'm gonna actually add more parentheses anytime I plug in a zero for x. Sine of zero plus, let's see, we got three zero squared plus one times cosine of zero. And I'm gonna do my order of operations, which just means I have to multiply the inside of parentheses first, or do the inside of parentheses first. Six times zero here is zero. Sine of zero, let's see, I can use my calculator, but I know that the sine function starts at zero, that's also zero. Plus zero squared is zero times three is zero, but that plus one is gonna make that one. And cosine of zero is also one. So we have zero times zero plus one times one, it's amazing how nice our answer is here. The slope of our function, this original function, at zero is actually just equal to one, right? But the big picture here is the organization of my work. How did I set myself up for success in this problem? 
I started with my chart of u, v, u prime, v prime, and I annotated which one was u and which one was v. I wrote my formula. And then it was just a matter of plugging things in in the correct order. So I notice here that I had that 6x. <clears throat> That's my u prime. Then I had sine of x, there's my v. Then I had, you know, it's such that plus sign u times v prime. Right. Yeah. Okay. So if you just follow that order, then you can put things together. Or if you have to plug in, you could just plug in that number and evaluate to find the slope. But there's my derivative. Okay. Once again, and I guess I should stamp this answer was correct. I didn't have to go further unless the question asks me to. I'm going to clear this and we're going to talk about the quotient rule. Quotient rule is a little bit different. The quotient rule, uh, oops, I have a problem with my notes here. This is absolutely false. This is used if our function y is u over v, right? Some kind of division of those two things, which we have here, right? We have u and we have v. So I'm going to set up that same chart that I did before with u, u prime, v, v prime to help me organize. So then I can plug into this different formula. Notice how we still have u prime v and u v prime, but this time we have a minus in between and it's all over v squared. So those two things are a little bit different for quotient rule. And that's why it's nice to have these formulas so that we can remember those. Let's take a look. u is 2x to the third plus x b is x minus six. And now let's take the derivative. Let's see, power rule here, three times two is six. Subtract one from that, six x squared. And then v, let's see, the derivative of one x is just one and negative six becomes zero. So I can consider that like minus zero, but I don't need that, it's just one. So here are my derivatives. Now let's put this all in order. Okay, we are asked to find h prime of x. I should have stated that from the beginning. That's the same thing as you know y prime, right? Which is our derivative. I'm going to rewrite my formula, have it directly in front of me so that I can refer to it. So now in this case, let's actually see u prime, starting with the same one, 6x squared, times v, x minus 6. I'm going to use parentheses again. I should have done that with the 6x squared. Forgive me. Let me go back there and do that. I like to be very specific and clear with my grouping. And then we're going to do minus times u. And our u here is 2x to the third plus x times v prime, which is just times 1. Now, in a problem like this, I would definitely clean up some things on the top because I think this is going to be pretty nice. <clears throat> but we just cannot forget that that has a v squared on the bottom. So we're going to put this whole thing over v squared, which in this case, let's see, that's x minus 6. Or maybe I want to put a little 2 there to remind myself, hey, you got to square that. All right, so this would be our derivative function right here. This is my h prime of x. So the real kind of guts of this is just making sure that we take those derivatives individually, but we put them in this really specific order, which is necessary for our quotient rule. Now, if I did want to clean some things up here, let's just see what this would be cleaned up. <clears throat> 6x squared, I'm going to distribute. That will give me 6x to the third minus 36x squared minus 1 times all of that. I'm going to keep that in parentheses. And this is important because we're subtracting this entire thing. So I'm going to have to end up distributing that negative sign all over x minus 6 squared. I'm going to leave that as such for now. I might be able to factor that out later. And then if I kind of clean this up some more, let's see, I'm going to make this minus, I'm going to distribute that minus sign. This is going to turn into, let's see, 2x squared would turn into minus, and then that plus would turn into a minus, right? Distributing that negative sign would basically change the signs of both of those. And then I could end up uh, multiplying, sorry, not multiplying, combining some like terms. I got a 6x squared uh, to the third up top and a minus 2x squared. So let's just see what that would give me. 6 minus 2 is 4x to the third. 
minus 36 x squared minus x all over x minus six squared. Yikes. Okay, and then I could factor out an x, which is equal to, let's see, x on top. All over x minus six squared. And this can not be factored because a times c four times one is four and there are no factors of four that would add or subtract to 36. So this really would be my final answer right here. Yikes. This was good though. <laughs> this was still correct, right? I would only take all of these steps to get down to here if the question did ask you to, um, you know, simplify your answer as much as possible or if it were a multiple choice question and it was very clear that they did simplify. So this is absolutely correct. This is only necessary sometimes. You'll have to just pay attention to the prompt. See what it's asking you to do. Um, so yeah, derivatives, correct order, organization, and neatness a little bit better than mine. Go ahead and try that exit ticket with two similar problems and I'll see you tomorrow.